Yes, it's that time of year again when you have to suffer Christmas jumpers. But mind you, I'm the kind of guy that, that only wears Christmas jumpers with my passion on it. Used to be Star Wars Christmas jumpers. No, not anymore. Now it's DC. But though I have seen Bohemian Rhapsody Christmas jumper. So, a wee quick wee story. A wee quick but true story. Uh, Normally, uh, every year when there's a DC movie c comes out, I take these kids who are now in primary 7, they're 11, 12 years old and stuff like that. And I've took them to every DC film. But in the last year or so, they've been arguing, they've been fighting, pain has been called in, and your son, your niece, and all that stuff has been said, and we couldn't get... It's just girls, boys, whatever, hormones, you name it, it's just gone berserk. So I showed them the trailer to Aquaman and they, they got excited and I said, well, are you taking this to see that? Well, I don't think so. No, not unless you guys can clear up whatever problems you've got. Because if I take you, I've got to take this person and this person still not talking to you and yada, yada, yada. So the minute I said that, things changed for the better. And, um, you know, so Aquaman, instead of calming down the seven seas, if They've calmed down five boys. And um, and I thought, what better way to treat them than stand by me? So I've got a bit of each. So you're probably wondering, you know, because I've been making all these Queen DC videos recently, why why am I doing it? And it's, it's because I see them as the same sort of artistic sort of view. Uh, and so whenever I talk about art, you know, like the music of Queen or whatever, um, put it down to maybe your favourite artist or director or actor. So whenever I talk about the band, just imagine I'm talking about the thing, the artist that you love, whether it be in the music business, TV business, movie business, art business, any sort of business, right? Just put your own preference of what you want me to be talking about. Because it all coincides, because all artists are the same. So, with that in mind, because uh, I bet you, you can connect it all. So, growing up, I was a bit too young for for, for Queen, um, but I grew up listening to my dad's records, and of course one of the first records I got that they had was the Queen Greatest Hits, and every one of these songs was, was just fantastic, blew me away. Medium Raps Day, Another One Bites the Dust, Crazy Little Hink or Love, We Will Rock You, We Are The Champions, stuff like that, right, fantastic, right, you could listen to it all day, and uh, eventually came out with well, Great Hits 2 and 3, and you, you, can, you can get this, right, it's, 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 it'll be in the shops everywhere now, No, because I went into HMV and they're there alongside the Medium Raps Day, so I'm tracking, so you get something like, I don't know, 17 songs in each, and, and so that's three CDs with 17 songs on each, and they're fantastic, they're, they are brilliant, and I made a, a video about the, the very last one, having one. Anyway, so, but why am I talking, it's because after the film, it, it's, now here's the thing, right, to like an artist of any means doesn't mean you have to like everything that they do. Right? To be a fan of them, right? So whether it's Zack Snyder or anything like that, if they make a movie, whatever. Get what I mean? Now when I see artists, okay, or whatever. You don't need to like every movie or every song or whatever um, in order to, to appreciate them or the visions that they had for the product that they made. And because I knew that Queen, when they first started off, was really heavy rock, I'm not, I mean, I've listened to heavy rock. It's not something I can put on every day. I can listen to it. And, uh, but, you know, I have my, my preferences and stuff like that. And there was a time I was right into rock. I, I used to wear death chains and leather jackets and stuff like that. Uh, and uh, then I felt, no, I need to change, go on to 70s disco or whatever and, and funk. Now, in the film, the... the they talked about, of course, Behedium Rhapsody, which then features on the CD, like this one here, right? And this one's called A Night at the Opera. And it, and it's 
And it's, so, of course, when I listened to it, I didn't really care too much for the CD at first, but the more I listened to it, of course, the, the more I like it. Because sometimes when you walk, listen to a song, you might not get all of it the first time around, and you have to see it the second one. See what, I, see what I did there? You know, you could talk, you could reference that as though I was talking about BVS. So I won't try and bring that up now. Now that I believe you know where I'm coming from when I'm talking about Queen, I can be talking about what you want me to talk about because they're all relevant because they're all artists. So I listened to uh, the song and first of all it starts off with a kind of musical rock number called Death on Two Legs which was a song written for the people that were cheating them out of the money, you know, was robbing them and, and everything else so they made that song. Then they went on to a 1920s sort of, I, don't, I, I wouldn't know, ragtime music or something like that. It was pretty pretty weird. Something like uh, Charlie Chaplin would sing or Laurel and Hardy. Right? And then it goes on to a sort of ballad and uh, One Make Love to My Car. And, but in this CD, you are definitely going on a, a, a different mixture of music from songs that that are very similar to the Beatles in, uh, in the 70s, you know, the, like the Yellow Submarine, the music that was in that, you know. Uh, so, yeah. And then you've got f what I can only describe as um, uh, folk music and, you know, something of uh, folk music as in, you know, Celtic or whatever, just something you know, maybe the, not the Irish or whatever, but you get my meaning, the music of your own sort of area that starts. And, and then, of course, you've got the Behedium Rhapsody, and, and then you've got the big favourites, like You're My Best Friend, and I Love My Life, and then you've got the heavy rock into it as well, and the opera, and it's a whole mixture of music. So you can see that this band was taking risks with their artwork and they said it themselves uh, that they didn't want to be piped down by one but of course sometimes it takes years for fans and everything else to accept um a change in direction when it comes to uh, to music okay because you're they're used to movies or see i'm referencing again or music from that person and to stick with it, but when you when you look at all the other artists out there, they try the best not to stick. Modern artists, not so much. They just do what they're told and they make what they make. I mean, you you look at see Aquaman director, right? Started off with horror movies and now is doing a um, family movie. So Queen really, really took risks with this album and. They want they demanded the Behedium Rhapsody, the full length song. Not cut down to the standard what everybody's listening to. You get the BVS reference, uh -huh. but the long version of the music. So and that's how they carried on. So whether you, you like that song or you don't like that song, you can totally respect the artist for what they're doing. And and how brave enough they, they, they were to walk away from the studio and, and get new managers that saw the, them the way they, they seen themselves. Be like Zack Snyder getting another studio someplace else, you know? Okay. Or any in. Um so I mean I, I respect them now. It's it's made me interested. Then of course punk music came out. So I thought what and it's not that now some people would say that they sold the soul when they wanted to make popular music and they went from rock. And that's what I used to hear. But now I believe no. They just wanted them to make and you could hear signs from it from the very first albums they did. You could hear signs um of music that they'll really do in 10 years time, you know, you can hear wee traces of it from the early start, so when they got to something like Behedium Rhapsody, they already made songs like that previously, so it wasn't like, well this is too nuts, this is too crazy, no, to them it was a norm, because that's how they would practice in the studios, and and so when punk came along, everybody's saying, oh punk's a new way, but then they came out with, which I haven't listened to yet, is 
uh, Queen News of the World, which well, it's that has We Will Rock You, We Are the Champions, She Heart Attack, which was maybe the third album. Um, who Needs You is Slate, Melancholy Blues, uh, Flight from the Enslave. I've never heard of them, but I'm interested in seeing where they go with this one. Um, and then, of course, they went out and the kind of 80s came out and you had, like, the Pet Shop Boys and all the keyboard stuff. And so they thought, right, if they're doing it, let's try it. And they came out with a kind of groovy funk album called, which I want to get. Um, I can't remember what, what, what the album's called. Oh, um, but, it had, but even Michael Jackson was a fan and probably drew inspiration from that album. And um, and they actually did a secret duet or something, but a lot of fans were like angry. What are you doing making this music? You are meant to be a rock band, you know. And Freddie Mercury came out and says, "I know you've all lost your spirit." He says, "We we we're still a rock band, but we want to do something different, you know." And it's not like they're trying to. Appeal to the ma It's just they're interested in writing music, and they're interested uh, in being creative, like any artist does. So instead of just, you know, and now that we have this collection of the greatest hits, the songs that on each of these albums that just stood up above everyone else's. Now listen to this, there were some songs in this one I thought should be on the greatest one. But you know, the majority spoke and and it's finding that, it's like finding one of those DVDs you wish that it actually didn't go straight to DVD and was in, on the cinema. But that's what an artist does, they, they, they create, they put it all in an album and and they see how well it does, and they see how well it receives, and, and everything else. So please, if you're out there, take a gamble with movies, or music, or TV, or anything. That might not necessarily float your boat. You might be trapped, like all these hip-hop people that are claiming they've never heard Bohemian Rhapsody before, uh, and, um, and is now taken. Now, as I said before, there are many generations out there that won't even watch a black and white movie because it's black and white. So let's all put our feelings aside and let's go out exploring all the greatest hits that are out there. Greatest hits. So I hope you get what I mean. And um, thanks for listening. Uh, and hopefully the next video I make will be uh, Aquaman. And my reaction to that. And, but if I don't, have a good Christmas and have a happy new year to you all. And thank you for subscribing or even just listening to us. Thank you.